Welcome to a screen captured edition of the Hogger History Podcast. No music, no frills, just notes. I, I don't know if that's like, if you would think that that's better because it gets right to the point, or you'd be like, man, that dude didn't even take time to put any intro music on this podcast. Or maybe you'd be like, man, that dude really narrates his inner monologue out loud. Can he just get to the point? So let's do that. Today we're going to talk about the time period between World War I and World War II. I'm Mr. Hogger, and if you're watching from outside our school, you can subscribe to this podcast and get notes all year long to help you in world history or U.S. history class. Today we're going to talk about the effects and some of the major events, some of the questions that are going to be on our test and assessment, and what led the world from World War I into World War II, and what were these 20 years of in-between time? Well, first of all, it was a time period of spending lots of money. America came to the aid of the Allies and gave $7 billion of aid. $7 billion. That is quite a lot of money to have given in money and supplies and goods. And then this meme, we talked about how Austria and Serbia, just like Jim in the office here behind the blinds watching while Germany assumes war guilt. There are a lot of people who are impacted by this, like Harry Patch, the last surviving soldier of World War I, and all Americans and people worldwide. And it was the President Woodrow Wilson who initially kept the United States out of World War I and ultimately helped lead the country to victory. And when the war ended with the Treaty of Versailles and the Armistice, or ceasefire, we had had over 1.2 million who served the war effort. And that was an incredible amount of people to come in who didn't start at the beginning of the war. People who grew up during this age between wars and found themselves lost in these conflict, they ended up being known as the lost generation for the people who lost and were disillusioned by the damage, the blame, the military fighting, the loss of life. And it really was uh, a disruption in the life and the possibility that people could achieve. And this brings in the era of F. Scott Fitzgerald, the story of the Great Gatsby, which is required reading at most schools. It's also demonstrated in this image here from these students without a roof of the school that had been damaged. And you can see the rubble and the debris and how overcrowded it was because so many schools had been damaged that all these students were forced together from many different areas and that brings a lot of depression and difficulty and also results in a lot of different challenges so these are the people who are reaching adulthood shortly after or during world war one and rejecting the traditions of older generations they were rebelling because they saw a negative implication of the way that life had been reached before that so what i ask you next is for a list of long-term effects of world war one you can see them all here. I mean, the amount of people that fought, the money that was spent, how many damaged areas that were going to be on Germany's shoulders for reparations and rebuilding, the limitation on the German army, the seizing of weapons, ships, and navy, and America sur surfacing as a world power. There are 10 on the screen that you're looking at, and I'm going to ask you for five. So take a good look at that list and consider the things that we talked about in class and the impact that the whole world was witnessing. According, uh, so we have a few a question here that we're going to skip, which is a, about a, a resource that's only an in-class thing. So we'll get to talk about that later, but we'll end up skipping that on the test. The French commander who is most notably and credited with the victory is Ferdinand Foch, and we spent time talking about that in class. When we talk about what's not part of the armistice, we did not return German prisoners and we did not end the German blockade of ports. So we remained in Germany and we did not return German prisoners. These two items here are going to be important, but all of these peace agreement effects, the return of the allied prisoners, future reparation agreement, the surrender of German weapons and the end of fighting and hostilities all come with the armistice. President Wilson comes up with ideas on how to recover the nation and bring us back to peace and he does that after the treaty is signed with his 14 points that helped resolve territorial disputes they also talked about how to form peaceful alliances and treaties and how to create an international organization that was the league of nations that would eventually become nato that would eventually become the groundwork for the united nations so his 14 points did a lot to cover territorial disputes to shield each other, to form national organizations for protection, and also to 
um, hopefully lay out the points to not enter into conflict again in the future. So that's the League of Nations, and you can look on the screen at what NATO has become, how many nations are involved in the flags that are emblematic on the screen. The total cost of the war was more than $125 billion, not adjusted for inflation in 1919 money. Besides this financial change, there are a lot more effects of America after winning World War I. The economy starts to convert back to a traditional economy. We have a period of uh, celebration and roaring 20s and cultural explosion followed by a stock market collapse, credit card debt, and over-speculation. You've got the big four coming together to make peace. It's England, France, the United States, and Italy. And you've got chaos boiling over in Russia with the Russian Revolution after the Bolshevik Revolution, which we've now covered about two or two weeks ago in class. So the only thing left to talk about is what we did most recently in class, and that was to talk about the story of what causes World War II. And I used the acronym and borrowed from other teachers that used the acronym GIANTS. And I actually made a substitution for appeasement as the letter A instead of alliances. But tell me why Germany, America's isolation, appeasement of Italy and Germany, nationalism, treaties, and the soldiers all contributed to the war that would become. We have the, the same basic lineup with Italy switching sides to become an Axis power. We have fascism rising up where there are weaknesses in many world economies. Dictators taking over and finding a lack of desire to form any conflict after everyone is so weary of war after World War I. And so in, in turn, three very aggressive nations under very extenuating difficult circumstances, suffering from depression, uh, battling the damage and the reparations of World War II, World War One, plus suffering under the weight of the agreements of the Treaty of Versailles, and feeling as if extremism might be the solution, are looking to form conflict to uh, create a narrative where they are the nations under attack from the world to motivate people to take up arms. Germany occupying the Rhineland and militarizing the concept of living space, then invading Czechoslovakia in March of 1939. The United States attempting to stay out and be neutral from this conflict and trying to avoid another long European entanglement. Europe in the middle of all of this conflict uh, as the Dr. Seuss cartoons that we looked at in class. M increasing number of people who are looking to make peace and in order to preserve peace, giving small portions of land or opportunity to nations like Germany to try to stop him and make him happy and hoped by meeting those demands they would satisfy the need for any further conflict. The rise of nationalism and the feeling of superiority among nations that were looking to seize territory from those that were sought to be lesser. The Treaty of Versailles failing to become enforceable and for failing to provide for the people in the nations that were damaged or punished. And then the availability now of 70 million total soldiers who are ready to go to war. And for all those reasons, I want you to explain the significance of those items and how that led to a situation in which countries were once again ready to explode like a powder keg. And we're going to spend a lot more time going through the intricacies of World War II. This is only meant to be a primer and an oversimplified summary of how we got from World War I to World War II. I hope that's been a helpful discussion for you. I hope you're able to highlight three important events or details. And we'll see you on the next edition of the Hogger History Podcast. Enjoy your weekend and your studying wherever you're at. And go ahead and give us a subscribe if you're interested. And otherwise, we'll see you back in class again. Thanks, everybody. And for now, class dismissed.